Good morning. My name is Nicole and I'm the chair of the SONA Advocacy Working Group. It's so exciting to see such enthusiasm and care about the well-being of architecture students. I do really wish that I could be there in person to present and be part of this amazing event, but unfortunately I'm currently on exchange in the Netherlands. Um, so today I'll be so today I pre-recorded a video for you all um, that shares some insights about the 2022 Sona Wellbeing Survey with the intent of starting a discourse on how we can collaboratively improve well-being in architecture education. So for those of you that don't know, Sona is the Student Organised Network for Architecture and the official student body of the Australian Institute of Architects. As a student led and run survey, the SONA Wellbeing Survey provides students with the opportunity to share their experiences and allows, allows SONA to advocate on their behalf. The survey had three aims. Firstly, to understand the current state of mental wellbeing of architecture students. Secondly, to understand what factors may be influencing their mental wellbeing. And lastly, to determine what actions we can take to improve their mental wellbeing. So mental well-being has been on SONA's radar for the last eight or so years. When I joined SONA in 2019, SONA had run two well-being surveys, one in 2016 and another in 2018. Both surveys indicated that students were stressed, not sleeping, not eating well and concerned about finding a job. When I saw these results, it was clear to me that not much had changed. The more that I spoke to students and heard their experiences, the sooner I realised that this culture of stress was deeply entrenched, expected and sometimes celebrated within architecture schools. I began to question, does it need to be like this? Our collective architectural experience is shared, but collective suffering should not be normalised and doesn't need to be part of the student experience. In 2020, with the COVID-19 pandemic and the shift to online learning, mental well-being became a priority with for SONA, with the 2020 survey finding that 92% of students were stressed or very stressed. As an ongoing area of concern, um, SONA has committed to running a biannual survey to collect data, track changes, and sort of gauge the student experience for, in regards to mental well-being. We understand that some of our previous surveys have had some elements of bias and through our methodology for our future surveys, we have sought to mitigate this. Firstly, we've sought to expand our list of influencing factors regarding what students could be stressed about through running workshops with SONA reps to get an on the ground, ex ex to get a series of on the ground experiences. Um, by conducting a series of literature reviews and through the analysis of previous surveys. We also worked with professional survey writer Leah Nansen to structure and write the survey um, in order to minimise bias within the questions themselves. The survey included a mixture of multiple choice, scaled and free text responses, um, and the 2022 survey ran for a two week period from the 21st of March to the 5th of April 2023. Participation in these surveys is voluntary and anonymous um, with the, a total of 529 respondents. We acknowledge that there is a large proportion of students that haven't participated in the survey um, and therefore a, a gap in the student experience. And these are probably the students whose voices we need to hear the most. Um, and we hope that through these discussions, they will feel more comfortable in engaging in future surveys. So when looking at the demographics of our 2022 survey, the largest group of respondents by age were between 18 and 24, with a, highly, a, a slightly higher proportion of females responding. Um, and there was a relatively even spread among location of respondents, with a, high, a slightly higher concentration of respondents in Victoria and Queensland. 13% of um, respondents were Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander, with 26% being international students. The majority of students were in their bachelors, with 32% in their masters, and students largely attended um, classes on campus, with 32% attending in a hybrid format and 7% solely online. So from our 2020 survey, we saw a 15% decrease in stress levels 
And this may have been for a variety of factors, including um, implications of COVID-19, a potential shift in the culture around mental well-being, or a potential removal of bias from our survey. But despite these factors um, this the, and this reduction, there was still a 55% um, response rate of students feeling stressed or very stressed. So our survey asked students about three types of stress. The general factors of stress relating to their study, um, stress relating to how they approach study, um, and the stress that they felt related to finding a job. So from a range of stress factors, including physical safety, online study, and time management, students were largely stressed by the following factors. 58% of students were most stressed by deadlines, 49% largely stressed by study load, um, with 45% stressed due to comparing themselves to others, and 40% most stressed about finding a job. So we found that there were three key influencing stress factors, and they were access to well-being services, studio culture, and expectations of education. So the first factor that we'll look at today is well-being services. So we asked students um, about the well-being services at their university um, and if they were aware or unaware of them or if they would or would not use them. So of the services noted, the majority of students marked that they were aware of and would use food outlets, student feedback forums and university organised social groups. Um, the survey also revealed that services that students were unaware of and would use were access to emergency accommodation, time management and planning support, and health and wellness workshops. Interestingly, clinical mental health support was utilised by students of all stress levels, um, though, and the students that did utilise these support services noted experiencing benefits, including assisting them in dealing with university stress, um, learning effective coping mechanisms, and feeling empowered to take better care of themselves. However, cost, stigma, lack of awareness, and the cost of accessing these services acted as barriers to students seeking support. Students noted that they would be encouraged to use mental health support if it was free, private and confidential, and administered by certified professionals. So the next factor that we explored was studio culture. Studio culture is a valuable part of architectural education, providing environments for students to collaborate, review, support and present their work. So 91% of students responded that they had a positive experience in the studio. And this is great. It's, it's wonderful that students are enjoying their time in the university environment um, or in the studio in particular. Um, and so while it doesn't seem like there's an issue, um, as a fundamental part of architectural education, it's important for us to continue to look at how this studio environment can be improved. Um, so studio culture is impacted by three key factors, tutors and lecturers, physical space and atmosphere. So students highly valued tutors and lecturers that were passionate, knowledgeable, um, that provided high quality and timely feedback and that set clear expectations. In their physical spaces, students valued natural light and ventilation, 24 hour access, and the ability, um, availability to access the resources required to complete their studies. And lastly, student, students valued supportive trust-based environments that allow them to collaborate and share, utilizing small groups supported by teachers with an approach of, to criticism being constructive and kind rather than destructive. The last influencing factor that we looked at was students' expectation of study. So unfortunately, 58% of students felt like their course had either not met or only somewhat met their expectations. Feelings like, um, feeling like their expectations of their studies aren't being met may impact students' sense of purpose or their mental health. So when asked what students value most from their course, most students highly valued a course's ability to prepare them for a future in architecture. However, seeking employment post-graduation, many students don't feel prepared. Some students commented expecting their course to have a greater focus on practice, 
while others didn't know what was expected or didn't feel prepared for practice. And as a result, oh, um, and as a result, contemplated leaving architecture. So when asked about what they could improve um, about their experiences studying architecture, students noted that improved software training would help. Um, additionally, some students wanted more practical experience and internships. However, we should consider, should students feel this way? Students go to university with the hope that it will improve their career opportunities. However, focusing solely on employability may diminish the broader goal of education to develop well-rounded, socially conscious individuals, leading to the question, should architecture be more vocational or fundamentally educational? The challenges of mental health and well-being are nuanced. I'll now talk through some of the recommendations mentioned by students to address these challenges. So students are stressed due to high workloads and deadlines. We can address this through fostering a continuous feedback loop that supports students sharing their experiences. We should explore how policies around deadlines and workloads can support mental health. And we should consider how well-being can be integrated into the curriculum, offering workshops that teach stress management, mindfulness, and healthy working habits. There are barriers to accessing well-being support. We need to increase accessibility. Universities should offer mental health services that are free, confidential, and administered by a professional. We need to reduce stigma, potentially by increasing visibility of services and normalizing discussions about mental health. And we need to train faculty to be equipped to recognize the signs of mental distress and with knowledge of where to refer students to to get the help that they need. When it comes to the studio environment, students value high quality feedback, clear expectations, dedicated studio spaces, and an environment that supports collaboration. We can support this collaborative studio environment by providing staff with training on how to provide timely, productive, and constructive feedback, um, and by providing the appropriate infrastructure that students need to do their work. Um, the use of a buddy system may assist in supporting younger students to establish expectations for appropriate studio culture. And lastly, students don't feel prepared for practice. We need to provide students with a better understanding and more realistic expectations of what practice might be like. We can do this through supporting connections to practice, communicating the purpose of, of assessment as it relates to practice, and fostering a culture of lifelong learning. If you would like to know more about the work that Sonia has done in this space, please visit our website. Um, and if you want to know about more about this survey in particular, um, please stay tuned as we're going to release our full report on the 2022 survey later this month. Thank you all for your time and support in improving student health and well-being. I'm confident that together through open dialogue, collaboration and innovation, we can ensure that students ju don't just survive their educational journeys, but thrive. Thank you.